I saw a werewolf with a Chinese menu in his hand. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the view of Wolfpack Research or any of its officers. The views and opinions expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on this program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. We are not investment advisors. We hold no registrations with the SEC, FINRA, or any other regulatory agency, and none of the opinions expressed on this podcast should be considered investment advice. The listener should assume that we have positions in and stand to benefit from any stock or other security mentioned on this podcast. Do your own research before making investment decisions. Welcome to the Wolf Den, everybody. This is Dan David. Joining me today from the Wolf Pack is, yeah, you guessed it, Carl, our sound engineer. God help us all. We never know what's going to happen there. We do know that our guests got late invites. Thank you, Carl. Anytime. Anytime. Our guests today on a special podcast are Roddy Boyd and Carson Block. I've asked them to join me today to, to clear up maybe an understanding or misunderstanding I have about an individual that's been discussed in the media lately. Roddy wrote an article and I, I believe Michelle, uh, I'll call her Clearier cause that pisses her off, but it's <laughs> Cl- Clarier, but Clarier. it is Celerier. Yeah. And, and I'll just throw this out there to the two of you, whoever catches the, the toss up. Who's Derek Snowdy? I don't know if anybody really knew, like uh, as a real answer for, who is Derek Snowdy at heart? He's a Canadian investigator. He fucked some of us. Uh, well, um, okay. L- listen, that's a growth industry, Carson. I don't think you have to worry about, you know, coming wish, out on my show. I wish you asked a better question than that. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, no, who is Derek Snowdy? I didn't mean that in any kind of metaphysical sense. I mean, like, who is this guy, Derek Snowdy, that that you know roddy has talked about and others have talked about apparently from what i've read this is a legit private investigator from canada so if you're doing if you were doing a background on him either one of you you would see that the guy has some bona fide credentials and so tell me i mean which one of you guys met him first i guess carson you did right yes i met him first and roddy met him through me so um i mean it it looks like this guy <laughs> so without like i'm jumping ahead but I'll, I'll i'll preface this question i have for roddy because he he might know this better than i do but my question and then i'll explain the background but my question is was this guy always angling to infiltrate short sellers for the benefit of companies that were short targets or is that something that happened after he got to know some of us short sellers? So I'll rewind. Uh, late 2014, got an email to the info at Muddy Waters Research Box. It's a guy who says, I'm a, I'm a private investigator in Canada named Derek Snowdy. Uh, you can see reports in the media about me. I've been working on Canadian National Rail. I think there's some fraud there, some very interesting things you should take a look at, blah, blah, blah. You know, CNR was at the time, I don't know, 60, 70 billion enterprise value or, you know, it's like, it was interesting. So did some research. Derek Snowdy is a private investigator. He was best known for some work he did in Canada where I guess he, his work ended up to, ended up leading to the downfall of a female member of parliament because he amassed evidence that she was partying with female strippers you know doing blow off them and all that stuff so yeah but what did she do uh, wrong (laughs) well you know i i mean i did say to derek half jokingly that maybe i should have taken this more seriously at the time that i said it but i was just like honestly man the world kind of needs more women like this in politics you know, why'd you, why'd you have to fucking bring her down? How many guys are doing the same thing right. and don't, you know, and don't get pummeled for it. Right. You know, um, they get statues. And, yeah. I'm, right. Exactly. And I don't know his, his thing was, oh yeah, but she was horrible for other reasons. You know? Yeah. I get it. Doing blow off strippers isn't a horrible thing, but whatever, whatever. So anyway, we talked about Canadian national rail and he said, well, yeah, I think they're committing fraud because they mess with their, you know, they're, they're charging companies 
for for renting rail cars that aren't actually being rented to them. And I mean, he had, he had this whole, you know, he had this whole, I guess, explanation and it was interesting. But then when I started asking him what evidence he had, he said, well, look, listen, I, I've talked to people, you'd have to go and talk to them yourself. And so it became clear to me that in late 2014, when we weren't managing outside capital, that there were just easier ways of of making money than getting into this. But I thought it was intellectually very interesting. At the same time, I knew that Roddy was, it was at the time, his uh, foundation was the Southern Investigative Reporting Foundation. Roddy was looking for like really big, impactful stories with broad reach. So I said to Derek, look, I'm not, I'm not interested, but investigative reporter, reporter, Roddy Boyd, he might be. So if it's okay with you, I'll connect you. He said, yeah, it is. And so I connected him with Roddy and I don't know, I didn't really hear much about it until a couple of years later, maybe when Roddy wrote the story. So I will finish it by saying that, well, actually, I mean, that, you know, I, I met Derek a couple times in person, you know, he kind of looks like one of those guys who stormed the uh, Capitol on January 6th. So he looks like Carl. No, Carl, Carl's clean shaven. Like I know Carl like wears camo, you know, panties and shit like that, but (laughs) you know, he's clean shaven. Like this looks like the guys who like really the full on beard and what have you kind of, you know, white supremacist guys, not saying he's a white supremacist. He just, he just looks the type. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, Roddy over to you. Basically what, what Carson said, there's, there's not terribly much to add. I mean, Carson and I had a call when he made the recommendation. I, I did the same thing that anybody else would do. I Googled it. I saw that he was uh, sort of a key player in a, uh, a very newsworthy Canadian scandal uh, where a, a member of parliament and a cabinet member for, I think it was prime minister, Stephen Harper, she was in her portfolio was like women's issues or women's equity. I'm not sure exactly. Oh, and Boy, were they? Really? Yeah, she, yeah. No, I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. She, uh, she went out of there on a rail. I mean, it was a broader <laughs> scandal. <laughs> I had a broader scandal even. Yeah. There you go. You guys are horrible. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Her husband was, while there's some there's actual debate did she actually do cocaine off of dripper's breasts the broader question is her husband there was no doubt that he was just a oily sleazy rent seeker i mean there's the worst example of of the kind of creature you find in large western capitals just peddling influence and with a roster of crummy friends. Well, I'm and sure he kept his job though. Yeah. yeah geez, I'm further. sure they're printing cash. Um, you got a lot further in the article than I did, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I mean, I really did the work. I was like, well, who is this guy? Anyway, Carson and I had a talk. I wanted to understand the handoff. Like he was going to pass for what reasons it was exactly as he laid out there, just not a real easy or intuitive short for him. And whereas I looked at it and it was what I had been seeking to do more of, which is larger stories coupled with maybe getting outside of the U.S. market, maybe expanding readership. And sat you don't, on and you it don't for, have to worry about the trade because you're not, you're not short. You're yeah, not trading. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, exactly. That's the benefit of, of what I do. Well, as and, far as I can see, it might be the only, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We had some conversation. I shelved it for about six or seven months. Uh, I had a pretty busy 2015 in that I did. Oh, that's Valiant, wasn't it? Yeah, Valiant and Insys yeah. and another one. All three of them really were meaningful, but I picked up the story. And I don't think I had one more conversation with Snowdy other than a brief introductory one. We talked in 2016. He said exactly what Carson said, that he was representing a guy. He was basically a PI helping a client. And I had questions to him like, well, you don't have the documents. You don't have the knowledge. What's going on here? He was just a guy 
peddling a story. It's not something that the broader world has a lot of experience with, but mm. I do. And, and so I knew how to manage that. Flew up to Toronto. He gave me a couple rides around and that was it. We had, we had some meals together, got to know him a little. There wasn't much we talked about other than how he got involved in this case. And there's two things that emerge from this of note, which is at the end of, let's say, it's like a three to four day period, I was up there. This was an entirely document driven story. I mean, they were talking thousands of pages of documents that I was given access to that Snowdy had no connection to other than it was his client. So it turned out to be true what he was saying to you, like he had some documents and a client. Every, all the, the major things you look for, A, he's a PI. So, I mean, I get that he's trying to hustle. He might be trying to expand his book of business a little. But, you know, during our conversations, you know, because this was was an hour and a half out of Toronto. So we had a little time on, you know, on the road there. He was just talking to me and we'd be like, oh, we'd pass something on a highway. He's like, you know what that is? And I'm like, uh, you know, no, you're driving at 70 miles an hour. I don't, what the hell? I've never been to Toronto. And he's like, oh, that's the headquarters of Home Capital Group. And I was like, oh, okay, what's that? And there's, oh, hang on. That's that thing Mark Cahotis is yelling about on Twitter. Okay, well, that's that's wild, yeah. And then another time we passed by something, I think it was Concordia Healthcare. That I had heard of because Mark had been hollering about that for months. To me, it was literally like they were two foreign names. Like a lot of reporters, I only focus on what I've got in front of me. And I, you know, I just had no engagement with that stuff. I didn't want to really do anything with it because I try, believe it or not, to stay away from when short sellers are circling something, unless I have a cool new angle for it. My job isn't to disintermediate investment management objectives. Yeah, I can't even get a retweet from you. I mean, it's just like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I try, I try. Yeah. When I see stuff, I actually read your stuff. I think the one time you retweeted is when we, I think a title of a section we had in a report is Smart Brazil is Fucked. And, and that that uh, tickled your fancy. Yes, yes. That I mean, look, uh, I mean, maybe the last retweet you gave me. So yeah. let's 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 stop for a second and talk about why does this matter? So everybody's listened long enough to be like, well, who's Derek Snowdy? Why does it even matter? Well, why, which is why you should have kicked this off by explaining it instead of asking us like, oh, who's Derek Snowdy? We can do your show on your fucking show. We'll do my show on my show. You know what? Be a proper guest. Be it, be it, be a proper guest. <laughs> okay. All right. You know, why does it matter who Derek Snowdy is? You know, it turns out that this guy, you know, legitimate PI and has the information about, you know, this Canadian rail group that uh, Roddy was interested in, but he also had another agenda. His agenda was in, in his mind, or at least for his client, which was what Calidus and Catalyst Capital. Which were, were, which were funds in Canada. Am I getting that right? The guy who was paying him was a, a fund manager based in Bermuda. His name is Daniel Guy. Oh. He runs a Harrington Global Opportunity Fund. Mm -hmm. It's domiciled in Luxembourg, and it's got like under 50 LPs or something. So it, it doesn't really report into the investment management framework. There are a lot of exemptions there. Well, where this becomes relevant, though, is I guess Catalyst uh, Capital or Calidus. I think they use them interchangeably or they're two different related companies had, had basically engaged somebody that had Snowden try to infiltrate the short selling community and not Edward Snowden. He's the guy. Snowden's the guy who read your emails, right? Snowden's the guy who got you, you know, you, you, don't, you, you don't know that. I mean, they both could have. So <laughs> Snowden was, was engaged to infiltrate the short seller community because uh, I guess there was this idea that there's a cabal of short sellers who go after companies and they coordinate and they do it all together. Little do they know that most of us hate each other. Carson seems to hate me right now. It happens. But he does that by, I guess, meeting Carson for five minutes and Carson saying, I don't really need your services at all and passes it off to Roddy and then and then I guess you're saying as you're riding around, Roddy, you're noticing he's asking a lot of questions about Mark Cahotis. 
Well, hang on. Just sorry to jump in, but yeah. this is something. This goes back to that that question that I I asked. I'm not clear if in 2014, when he reached out to me, or when you know he talked to Roddy soon thereafter, like if if he was on a mission at that point to infiltrate, or if he just wanted to do business, or like he was representing his client. Like I I'm not clear on when in his mind his mission was to report back to, you know, shit bag companies on short seller activities. So that's eventually what, what happened. I guess the Genesis of, of, you know, his conversion or his version, we don't really know, but at some point he, he decided that he was going to help the short seller community. And then at another point he decided he was going to help companies go after short sellers. Is that right? Yes. I, I would say that the coalescing event is his client, this guy named Danny Guy, lost about $150 million, probably a little more, wow. when Concordia Healthcare collapsed oh. in uh, October of 17. And Concordia had, had been telling people, oh, we've got Apollo in the door or this private equity fund or that rival is looking at us when that sort of uh, financial sponsor transaction didn't materialize. That's when it obviously collapsed. It had to seek reorganization. And Danny Guy, who is a 20 year hedge fund manager, yeah. he went from, you know, not loving the shorts to they are absolutely the bane of Western existence. And he developed a two prong mental framework on it. One was all shorts operate in a cabal that all sort of came back to Mark Cahotis, this San Francisco area based short seller, formerly of Copper River slash Rocker Partners. Mm -hmm. They're laying eggs on Twitter, you know, high profile guy. And the, the other half of it was pure 2004, 2005. Patrick Byrne of Overstock, this complex naked shorting theory he had in which the prime brokers, regulators, and the media are captured. And Snowdy fed into the media and the regulators are captured. And so it's around that time, let's say the fall of 17, that this idea emerges. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I should note that uh, Snowdy Last contact I had with him, certainly in person, he just said he was a Mark Cahotis fan and he would love to try and meet him sometime and, and maybe even get a little work through him, you know, pulling documents in the Toronto area because mm -hmm. he's seeming to do a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay, you know, I'll, I'll shoot you an introduction email. And I, it, you know, I think I did it in the airport lounge or something like that, flying out of Toronto in 2016. And it never crossed my mind again until uh, recent days when obviously this cache of documents emerged in a, in a related lawsuit. Yeah. And, and by cache of documents, there's, there's a memorandum kind of floating around that there's a meeting with Catalyst, the attorneys, and I guess Snowdy comes in and gives a bunch of information. You know, it seems like opinion and fact which is weird because I've read the entire document and I disagree with almost all his facts and agree with all of his opinions. Uh, so that's, you know, that's particularly funny. Uh, as a, for instance, I remember I was talking to Carson. Well, first I'll just say like the first, the first bullet point, the lawyers and the people in the room that seem to be uh, engage him are already suspect of him <laughs> lying about why he's late to the meeting. <laughs> They say he walked in late, apologized, said he had a client meeting, but the lawyer says, but I saw this guy enter the building just ahead of me. After yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's all he's saying. So I don't believe this guy. Yeah. So like bullet point number one is yeah. Derek Snowy starts off the meeting with a stupid lie. Right. Yeah. And and then he, he says something's kind of funny, like the, the and I kind of know this about Carson, but like he says, the, you know, he's been to Carson's house and at, at a party at Carson's house. No, no. He said, I invited him to a party at my house. Yeah. Which Christmas party. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is weird Cause uh, I, I, I've been to your house. I've been to your house several times. I've never been to a party at your house. I know. It's like, we like, we don't have parties. 
to me, when I saw that part, that shit was just funny. Cause I'm like, I wouldn't be able to remember if I'd ever said, Hey, why don't you stop by the house? Right. You know, if you're going to be California, like I wouldn't be able to remember that. But when it's, I invited him to a, a, a holiday party at my house, like, nah, dude, that's just, that's just not how we just don't, we just don't have parties. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there seems to be a lot of stuff in there that like, even, even the people that he's talking to are just making side notes in this document like we don't believe you <laughs> which is kind of funny and now it's it, it's being held out there as as something that that Carson like sick this guy on short sellers because Carson has ironically not just a cabal against companies but you have a cabal that goes against short sellers which apparently Roddy and I are a part of and we work for you so Roddy, I want my check. How about you? You got a check? I donated a big 5K to Roddy's uh, foundation last year. We're making a leap. I mean, what has been happening in, just to give your audience like a little background here is, in the course of the preparation of this article, I certainly, and anybody who would read the article would see that a major person in this uh, subject of this article is Mark Cahotis you know, the prominent short seller and a guy who donated a very impressive amount of money. Uh, and a guy I've known for a lot of years, and I've talked about that. And in the course of saying, you know, Mark, could, could you walk through what Snowdy did? Because one of the things that Snowdy definitely did is he got up with Mimetics Group, that company that really, you know, most people, Catalyst slash Calidus in, in Canada, took one look at, at Snowdy and just call them the biggest BS artist they'd ever seen. In my article, I excerpt copies of Discovery from the lawsuit that were unsealed, and it's just scathing what a clown they view him as. Always saying he's got all this Discovery and really good information on this shadowy network that all seems to run through Mark Otis, yet at the end, he never does produce anything. And everybody appears to have one level or another discounted this guy the one entity that did not discount him and said oh this makes a yard of sense is my medics group mm. and at that point they were already under pressure from short sellers the short sellers they were under pressure from was a was a guy named john fickthorn dialectic and uh, ran at the time an entity called uh, dialectic capital management right. uh, in real weight in connecticut and so Snowdy presents with this late night AM radio fever dream. Reporters are involved and all manner of short sellers are involved so much so that they seize him and they say, you know, they give him a 20, they give him a contract to, to do basically undercover work on Mark Cahotis. And this company, my medics was really appalling. I, I can't recall a company that was as appalling as this company in the way they conducted themselves publicly toward short sellers and certain reporters. And so you can fast forward, you know, the Mark Cahotis feud with these guys has been covered in, in a lot of media. But when we start talking about this joking theory that, oh, you know, this is all Carson's doing and we're all his pawns, one of the collateral aspects that had emerged is Mark had within certainly aspects of the reporter community and certainly within large amount of the short selling community had been putting out the idea that this works larger than Snowdy is what he kept on saying to me. And I said, well, look, I'm hamstrung by what I have document wise. And I had Snowdy on the record. I mean, he told me he was working for the feds undercover, wearing a wire at my medic. So he was like this triple agent. You know, he'd come full circle. Okay. And there was that berserk narrative. And Mark seems to feel that it has evolved. He kept on saying, look at the fact patterns. And I'd say, well, what are the fact patterns? He's like, well, Carson's in on this. I'm like, he introduced me and I never talked to him again about it. And I, I have yet to talk to him about it. I'm the guy who made the introduction. It's my fault. With my imprimatur, Mark was cool with it because Mark was cool with Snowdy. 
Snowdy got into another 15 short sellers and recorded them and, you know, folded them into his land of spiders dementia. And I kind of pushed back on this theory that Carson was involved. And so when we make these jokes, it's actually unfortunate that at least a guy who's done incredible and powerful work in his career is putting out this argument. I'm public and private. And I, I certainly am. I haven't heard Mark put that out publicly. Is that no, he hasn't put it out in public. You're right. And I, I'll retract that. Okay. Yeah, so I guess what's bizarre, Mark, I think, is right about one aspect here. And I think that is there was a group of companies or, you know, a cabal of companies that basically were doing the same shit that they accused the cabal of short sellers that doesn't actually exist of doing. And I do think there are more companies that were involved in this. And I, I think Snowdy's just like a bit player here. You know, Josh Mitz is one of the useful idiot tools that these guys use mm -hmm. in their litigations. Marlon Paz is an attorney who I think whores himself out. There are a few other attorneys that whore themselves out I and mean, some guys up in Canada as well, but some PR firms. There are connections, and I think at times, to some extent, these companies have succeeded in getting the DOJ to fuck with some short sellers from time to time. So Mark is correct that, I, I think he's correct anyway, that Snowdy is part of a much larger picture and much larger story. But, like, do, do I have, like, am I pulling strings I mean, the irony is, right, we, we, were, we were involved in my medics. So, you know, involved meaning we were short. And I mean, and we, we, we traded it almost as badly as we traded GSX. Like net, net, we lost money on my medics, which, you know. Yeah. It was hard to do. Yeah, yeah well. It took some effort. At one point, it wasn't hard to do. But yeah. by the time it was hard to do, we were basically, we had washed our hands and said, fuck this. We're just making all the wrong decisions. But the, the irony is, so we were, uh, we were short my medics and my medics on its homepage for its business, just put front and center, the screed against short sellers yeah. and about naked illegal short sellers. And it puts Mark, they put fucking Mark Cahotis on there, you know, like illegal short selling as done by Mark Cahotis. I was like, holy shit. Like number one, this bullshit again, but you know, meaning like that false accusation that like Roddy said goes back to Patrick Byrne or maybe earlier but then number two I was like Mark's huh I didn't realize Mark's involved in my medics I called Mark up I'm like hey man listen I I are you, I take it you're involved in my medics Mark's like what the fuck's my medics he's like really you don't know he's like no I'm like go to this website you know Mark's on the phone with me and he's like what the fuck and that was how that whole thing between Mark and my medic started. Wow. Was them putting his name for God knows what reason on the website, me noticing it. And I'm the one who told Mark and like, I lived up the road from this guy and we didn't see each other much, but I always viewed myself as an ally. If anything of Mark's the shit that he went through with my medics, when the right. FBI awesome. agents came out to his house, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, you know, he didn't need any, you know, like pat on the back from me, but I, I gave it to him. I mean, occasionally. And, and I, you know, and I, I felt, I felt real, you know, sympathy, empathy for this guy. So I don't know at what point it gets twisted into that. I somehow caused any of this shit. So I don't know, man. I mean, I, the, the one thing, I mean, Mark, I think, refers to me as patient zero when it comes to Snowdy. To my knowledge, Snowdy Gosh. never said anything that was untruthful to me. I mean, I don't check, you know, the, the, things that, the things that he said to me that I would fact check, checked out. But, you know, we all get, I mean, we, we all have people coming at us, mm -hmm. you know, some more, you know, sophisticated than others at it. And you, you gotta, when you're doing this, you have to know that. And that's why I have 
for me, I have an ironclad rule. If I realize that you've lied to me yeah, or even shaded the truth, you're out. You're fucking dead to me. Like, I, I don't hate you. You're just dead to me. And, you know, I, I, I don't know, man. I mean, like Derek, like I said, to, he had never, my, I haven't talked to him much at all, but he's never done that to me. Had he, you know, I certainly never would have introduced him to Roddy. I mean, well, I introduced him to Roddy right after I talked to the guy, but I don't know, man. Like, you know, but I think, I hey, think man, that's look- a pretty good rule to live by. But when I look at some of the people in Mark's orbit, I know Mark doesn't, Mark doesn't subscribe to that rule. There are people in Mark's orbit who are known to be pathological at lying. And so I don't know, man, like, please don't throw rocks at me uh, over this. Uh, It's like, yeah, I I don't know. It's it's just nonsensical. Well, I mean, the ridiculous part of this is, I mean, like there's there, I got three different emails this week from people that I kind of know. I don't know them well, but they're like, yeah, yeah, Dan, uh, so-and-so wanted to, wants to speak to you, wants to get, get to know you or whatever. And I'm crossing you on emails. I mean, this shit fucking happens all the time. Like you either choose to say, okay, I've got the time today. I'll, I'll talk to so-and-so and and you do a little bit of DD and you talk to them. But at a certain point you own your shit, right? You own the words coming out of your mouth how you behave, the work you do, and and who you choose to be involved with. And I don't blame the person who connected me on email. Dan, here's what I would say. Of course, you're right. I've got a pretty decent memory, and I have no recollection of writing that email. I did it, like, in seconds, but, I mean, I couldn't tell you what it said. And, and I don't think Mark and I really ever discussed it further. And certainly Snowdy never really talked to me about Mark. From my perspective, I do feel terribly because A, I'm a reporter and I, it's my job to step back. Herb Greenberg, friend of your show and mm-hmm. known to many, great reporter and columnist. And I've known the guy for 15 years. We're friendly. We talk about personal stuff. Mm-hmm. And I could not ask him for a copy of an old Pacific Square report because that's what he does for a living. That's his line, you can't cross it. And what I'm getting at is saying that I don't think that I'm a reporter, I should be introducing hedge fund people to other people. It's like I'm stepping over a line. Now, am I as alleged like am i a tool of carson for doing this like i mean come on man give me agency give me some respect carson runs money and runs his life and i can't imagine he'd be terribly good at this sort of conspiracy and for whatever else you could throw at me i mean i would say that my reporting on elements of the short selling community has been pretty Mm -hmm accountability centric in that I absolutely will bite a hand that tries to feed me and I will name names and I'll put documents out there. And and it's just really unfortunate. Maybe that's the real cause of this, Roddy, is that, (laughs) that, you know, you've, you've called some people on their shit and they don't like it. And they think maybe Carson's behind it because you're not capable of original thought, even though you've been doing this for 20 years um, longer, 30. And it's just, it's just getting kind of fucking silly, really. And it, it just really is. And I can tell you, like, I've known Carson a few years now and closely for, you know, uh, a few years now. You don't have time for this, Carson. I, I mean, you never make time for this kind of shit unless somebody just throws it at you. We've got businesses to run. And when you're not doing that, you want to spend time with your family. I mean, it's just it's just not much more difficult than that. Yeah, no, I know, but I mean, and, but the fact that we're even spending this much well, time discussing this as as a possibility is is like just in and of itself kind of kind of ridiculous. I mean, I, you know, look, one, you know, a question is, I don't think, you know, I don't think I ever vouched for Derek. Roddy, it sounds like you just sent an email. You didn't vouch for him. If I vouch for somebody and it's the wrong guy, apologize. Um, 
but I, I rarely vouch for people just because I've been badly fucking burned by some of them. I, so. I think Roddy said you didn't vouch for him. You just said, this is this guy, and there you go. But he comes across, and I think Carson would back me on this, he comes across as a, a pretty in every man. He's pretty average guy, down to earth, blue collar. I figured he would be so non-threatening to Mark. Maybe this guy could pull some docs was my was our conversation about him. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, we used you know, we used him three times actually. It, one was to pull docs on a company we were looking at. There was nothing in the docs. The other was to do a quick drive by of a you know a, a parcel of land with a building just to confirm the building was there and tell us if there were cars out front or not. And then the third thing was actually pretty cool. It was a Senko Gold. They were having their AGM and we had a response that had you know, to something they'd said to our report that showed that their uh, mine was in danger of collapsing. They'd been minimizing it. So Derek arranged to have somebody in the room. Like we had Kinko's down the street print out a bunch of like really nice color photographs taken by satellites of the mine and, you know, show where it's about to collapse. So like Derek had somebody pick it up and go into the AGM and hand them out as though they were supposed to be, you know, from the company. So, <laughs> so, so let's, let's, so like a couple of things here, you know, as Roddy just said, pull documents. Yeah. I mean, you don't need a fucking genius to pull documents and you don't need, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, Jesus Christ either. I mean, it, if you're sending somebody to pull documents. What's your alternative? You call, you, you know, you call a law firm. Oh, well, we have to do a conflict check on that. And then yeah, 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 like, right, just to pull the fucking doc. So it's like, no, you're better off going to an investigator doing a drive by of the site again. Like, you know, we, we deal, we deal sometimes with the large global investigation firms and it's, it's always frustrating when you don't actually have a direct relationship with somebody who's, who's doing the actual work, because yeah. sometimes we get great work back, you know, for like $50,000. Other times we get complete garbage back for fifty thousand dollars, you know, because we don't know who's doing the work. Your relationships and, matter in this business. Yeah, so it's just like, okay, look, I know the guy who's on the ground. He's going to get in his car or on his motorcycle, drive by, and tell me what's going on. So, so that was the extent of the business that we've done with Derek. And I, like, I don't apologize for that. It wasn't us taking a big risk on on anything here. No. And he doesn't really level any uh, allegations y your way. And as a matter of fact, like in, in a bit of uh, another piece of irony, it says here that he was introduced to you by Andrew Leff. That's two. That's two F's. Not not a T from from Stock Lemon. <laughs> yeah. So they're just I don't I don't understand the reasons for those factual inaccuracies. I mean, but in any event, no, Andrew did not introduce him. Well, that's too bad because you could blame Andrew, right? It could go back to him. <laughs> Andrew's patient zero. Andrew's it's now patient Andrew zero. Pulling the strings. <laughs> I mean, I think one thing we're maybe glossing past, and it's it's your show, Dan, not mine. Or I should say it's Carl's show or Carl's world. We all just live in it. Correct. But uh, True story. It is the role that, <laughs> that Snowdy played in Sino Forest. In Carson oh, Sino Forest. Right. Story. Right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the, the guy goes in there, takes credit for Sino Forest. I mean, yeah. did you even know him then? Get a kick in your balls or what, Carson? Nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Sino Forest was 2011. Got the email from 2014. So, I mean, it does. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, Derek was probably lying to them or, but I look, I don't have, I don't have explanations. I don't really know or, uh, you know, it turns whatever. out the ca uh, catalyst first bullet point is correct. This guy's just a liar. <laughs> but yet it seems to have riled some people. And look, the reason I, I asked you guys to come on here is because I didn't know about any of this. I mean, you know, as well as I know, Carson, you know, we've never talked about any of this. I mean, we don't. Talk I mean, about it was kind of like a non issue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I like I I've had very little insight. I had no idea that Derek was a turncoat until a few months ago. Somebody, you know, somebody mentioned it. And I haven't had much information at all, uh, any specifics until I saw that document. Yeah, last week, Mark sent me the one document, the memo to which you're referring. Other than that, I don't have a lot of insight other than I do believe this, you know, there's a cabal of shitbag companies and their, their, their legal whores and, you know, and other useful tool idiots. So 
I would like to see that exposed. Uh, uh, by the way, using shareholder money to pay for all this shit. Well, that's the whole thing, right? Whenever these these guys fuck with us, it's you know, it's not their money that they're using to to fund it. Right. And you know, when you're my medics, I mean, obviously they knew, you know, Pete Petit knew what was going on and he was willing to, you know, I don't know that he me me committing crimes himself believed anything Snowdy was saying, but you know, it's a great distraction from his shit. So right. yeah. Um, of course you would you would sponsor that guy, but in in Pete's shoes. But um anyway, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I feel like that's the big story here. Like who's, you know, what are the connections? How have these companies worked together? What other shit have they, you know, because I, I know a couple of guys in this space who've had interactions with the DOJ and they believe that this stuff is all connected that you know, lawyers who left the DOJ and went to have basically gotten their former colleagues to fuck with the short sellers. And yeah, and all these dudes are connected like that to me is, is a story that I would love to see come out. Hint, but hint, Roddy. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not my, it's not my conspiracy. And I've known very little about this the whole time. So you know, I learned a lot more reading Roddy's article and Michelle's article than I already knew. Yeah. Well, and, and for my part, I'm just like, look, instead of instead of, you know, you and I just talking about this, Carson, and 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 then me calling up Roddy or whatever, like, fine, let's just put it on the podcast. Everybody thinks like this is all a big secret and we just, you know, get together in uh, in the cloakroom and and discuss chopping up the world. You know, it doesn't happen. It really doesn't. There, you know, there is no cabal of short sellers against companies. We just don't get along well enough. You know, at, ask Mark. But actually, you know, let me let me kind of take the other side of the don't get along thing. And so there's an important point here. I think almost everybody who's been an activist short seller I've met, I can get along with. Some of them I'm good friends with, others I'm not. We are all, you know, like to some extent, we're all competing as well. All right, I'm speaking for myself. I don't get along with most of them. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I mean, I don't have something against most of them, but I feel like there's, I feel like there's a lot of negativity in the activist shorts. I, I really think it just emanates from a small, small, small number of people in this space who just, you know, create this really toxic environment um, around them and, and, you know, and in this, I mean, I kind of feel like if, you know, but for a couple of those people and their pseudonymous accounts and their fucking vendettas and, you know, and shit like that, I don't know, man, like we'd all just kind of be like, you know, live and let live and no big deal. And Hey, congratulations. Great report. Or, yeah, I didn't think that was a great report, but it's, there just shouldn't be the drama associated with this job that there is, but for a very small fucking number of people. Well, I think the difference between, you know, our opinions on it are, you know, that's the world I want to live in, but the world I do live in, it, you do have these pseudonymous accounts of, you know, shorts on there, just like waxing nuts, right. And just jealous or whatever, like your success or my success is at their expense. It's really not. Just do the work. Um, so, I, I mean, and if people think there is a cabal of short sellers, just putting it out there, I don't care. If people think there's a cabal of short sellers trying to hurt other short sellers and I'm a part of that or whatever, I don't care. Have fun with it. You know, I mean, just tell your stories. I don't care. Uh, if anything, that's the message I want to get across on uh, on this podcast. Whatever. Do the work or don't do the work, but I don't give a shit what you think. I think most of the world doesn't give a shit what they think. There you so, go. So, you know, that's the message I'd like to get across. Can't we all just get along? <laughs> all right. So is there anything else to say on this? I mean, like, I mean, are there, are there, are there friendships that can be repaired? Uh, were they friendships to begin with? I mean, I, I would add that, you know, again, I'm, I'm not a, the short sell or anything like that. But I mean, from what I've observed when I have to engage in, you know, with people in that community is there's a natural tiering of quality in terms of work output and the breadth and just the, the love, the care that goes into it. Okay. So that's one thing, but that, 
that's a natural economic evolution. You know, crap goes to the bottom, quality floats is how it's supposed to work. And I, I think over a certain amount of time, you know, there have been people pushing back against activist short selling. Mark publicly has been one of them. And I obviously Carson is and, and Dan are going to you two are going to have a very, very different level of conversation with your peers in this space than I am. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I think I've established, you know, don't get too close to me. Yeah. If you're not going to be Fair enough. on the up <laughs> and up. I, I do think that there's a stratification that's going on here privately at least I, I think mark and maybe some others Na name some names roddy because like I, I always see it's the same couple people and the couple clowns that are in their orbit i mean everyone's dancing around the well it's this group oh you shut up carl you these, name names who are these fuckers Go ahead. you know what you're a plant i know i'm you a plant are. i'm a house plant you're, hiding in the water state uh, you're a huge hedge that's what you are <laughs> I, I mean i i just said I, I mean obviously mark is one of those people who've had very pronounced views on on activist short selling. I, I think that there has been sort of the propagation of this toxicity that there's that old, I think it's Nietzsche's quote, when you set out to hunt monsters, be very careful you don't become one. And I think that there's there's a risk, right? When you start saying that that Zach Coway and Joe Nacera are tools of my medics. No, one is, you know, a PR guy with a wife and a kid and a mortgage. He doesn't even work other. for my medics and never did. He worked for an activist that, that yeah, he worked for uh, EOD. Yeah. He represented. Actually, I'd like to, in a moment, I'd like to just get on that. For, you know. Yeah. And I, I just, I think that there's this nasty kind of, when you're in a war, it's okay to kill some other people. It's the bombing campaign or stuff. And mm -hmm. I, I just hate the idea of ruining people's reputations who are completely oblique to the situation. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, obviously Mark won in my medics, right? And, and, and Mark won on Overstock and Mark won on Concordia and Mark won on, on other names because he's a very very talented short seller. And he has a lot to offer to a lot of people in a lot of ways. But this, this idea of the, it's a, a jihad where you go after people who are completely, what's the word, exogenous, completely removed from the situation is, is really problematic. Zach is a very, very decent guy. Yeah, I agree. I've known him since 2011. Uh, he represented us for probably 10 years. I mean, just a super decent guy. And yeah, like, you know, he had a mistake early in his career before he went into PR, you know, but I, I feel like he's lived, you know, he's lived his life in a, in a very solid upstanding way since I feel like, you know, it, that, that mistake doesn't define him. And, um, so I thought it was low, you know, going after that, but the, uh, yeah, but the, I mean, why, why go after him in the first place? Right. I mean, what, what a PR, what a PR representative does, I mean, he represents, you know, however many different clients, if it's an activist client, we would go to him, Hey, we're going to be shorting X, Y, Z. He looks and, you know, he'd look and see who, which reporters have written articles on that company said, okay, I'll reach out to them once you publish. And then if there's another angle that's interesting, you'll say, yeah, maybe you want to give so-and-so an exclusive on this. I can reach out and see if they'd be interested and they'll, you know, do an embargo. The way that Mark and, and, and Frazier spun this was like Zach was somehow this, this genius who came up with this whole, you know, strategy to go long my medics and like, no, man, you know, that was, that was Eod. Mark works for Eod. Zach works for Eod. You know, let me say this. Eod apparently did set up a pseudonymous accounts, or at least one pseudonymous account that he used to go after, 
one of the uh, activist shorts on my medics. All right. Yeah. Deserves that's, somewhat, credit. That's, over, that's over the line shit. Like, yeah, that's absolutely over the line. Yeah. Well, I mean, is, is it isn't isn't somebody that Mark knows doing that now? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, the, the king of fucking pseudonyms, right? And pseudonymous accounts. You know, but I, I mean, but look, I, okay, I did th- once, once, you know, I remember I did talk to Zach about the allegation that Iyad had set up a pseudonymous account or multiple pseudonymous accounts to, you know, fuck with uh, one of the activists. And Zach said, well, you know, I don't think so. He says it's not the case and that would be serious if he did. Later came out that he, that Iyad had in fact done that. And I don't know Iyad well. I've known him. I mean, my interactions with him, again, he hasn't lied to me that, you know, that I'm aware of. That That's over the line. And I, I do take, you know, I, I look, Zach made a call, like, to continue representing Iyad after that. I mean, you know, I get it. I, you know, I say this with the luxury of, you know, kind of cashing bigger checks than Zach cashes, but... I think I would have resigned, you know, but Zach, Zach's a very decent guy and, you know, life's not black and white and it's not, you know, and it, and it just kind of seems like, yeah. uh, Like Roddy said, you know, if you're not with Mark, it's kind of like, it's, it's a jihad against you. And I don't know, man, I, I just kind of feel like for the most part, like just live and fucking let live. If somebody's on the other side from you, then, Deal with that, but deal with that within the you know, rules of decency. Don't don't attack other people who are peripheral to it. I don't know, man. I so I thought the whole thing going after Zach was just so fucking far out of bounds. Still, still. I mean, I I, I really I've known Mark for a while, and he's an incredibly warm, loyal, decent man. There's a lot of really, really great things about him. I I think that the construction of social media kind of the dopamine feedback loop we all know about it is is really not serving his campaigns uh i I don't want to use the word campaign it sounds like a military thing but his his efforts to to highlight his his bets or his uh investments for want of a better word mark on it originally had a good way of being on Twitter. He had kind of short, pithy, humble, you know, he would about politics, this stuff is above my pay grade and all that kind of stuff. And, and somehow it's become just caustic. I mean, it's, it's become toxic the way. And again, I, I would also say that he gets hate coming inbound that makes even me blush and I get hate. And I, and of course, Carson gets hate and Dan gets hate. Yeah, but Roddy, that's what the platform has evolved into, right? That's what Twitter really is. It's, it's like 80, 90% of it is that negative. Well, it, look, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, but I mean, you could see this with, I mean, you know, Mark, Mark had this, this like longstanding feud with Sam Antar. Of Crazy Eddie's fame. There was a time just a few years ago when I, viewed myself as friendly with Sam and with Mark, if not, you know, counting them as friends of some sort. But I, but I saw, it's like, I felt like Twitter was just with Sam, like driving him into this, both of them, driving them into the super dark fucking place. And I remember, I mean, Sam occasionally on Twitter would go after me, you know, and say like, well, why aren't you standing up to, you know, Fraser pairing and, and, you know, and Mark Cahotis and, you know, and I, and I, I had, I would every now and then have to call Sam on the phone and just be like, look, man, like I've got my own shit to deal with. Like I've got, I, you know, I've got my own battles. Then I want to just be, you know, normal and engaged with my family. And if I'm just, you know, and I told him, I was like, and I see you and Mark. And I mean, you can't tell me that any of this makes either of you happier. And I told Sam also at one point, I was just like, what is victory for you in this thing with Mark? You know, like, like, be, because you've, you've made your point 10 million fucking times over. You think he was a hypocrite because he used to think Patrick Byrne was, uh, the, you know, the son of the devil. And now he's best friends with them. Fine. You made that fucking point. How do you win this? And so I do think that, you know, and, and I, and I felt like saying the same thing to Mark too, when he was going back at Sam and, 
And it's, and it's now it's like, I became the target of Sam's enmity on Twitter, but I just blocked him and I shit doesn't matter. I don't know. I hear every now and then that he's jumps up and down and screaming about me on Twitter, but yeah, by blocking this, this guy, like I don't have to deal with it. And you know, I'm now like the target of Mark's enmity, I, I guess, or from what I understand, but I don't know, man, like these guys just really need to put their fucking phones down and just start, you know, disengage from Twitter and, and try to just, I don't know, just be more fucking human or something for a little while. Cause it's really, I think it's really driven them. It's just, it brings out the worst in a lot of people, but these are two people I've seen up close, somewhat up close. And I just, and I, and I got a lot of respect for Mark and yeah, everything Roddy said about his, his talents and his intelligence. And I mean, when you have a talk with him and he's, and he's being rational and he, I mean, he can dissect these companies like nobody, but God damn, man, it just, then it, then it just like a switch flips and, you know, and it's a totally different world. So I don't know, cautionary tales about social media. And hmm. if you just, if you can't moderate your engagement with social media, like how it can just fuck you up. Yeah. I think that's, that's a good place to end it really. I mean, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, if I get anything from this, I, mean, I don't know Mark well, so, you know, whatever, if, if I don't, if I continue not to get a Christmas card, I'm going to have to find a way to live with that. Um, <laughs> but for, you know, for you guys, I think you miss what was, you know, not fond of what is. Hopefully you can get back what was. And maybe if Mark wants to join us and, you know, have a discussion, that'd be great. If he wants to just talk to you guys privately, that might even be better. Uh, but we wish you guys all the best. Uh, we Thank hope you. we've cleared some snowy stuff up. He is not actually snowed in. As, as we found. And one thing, one thing. Yeah. All future letters from other short sellers threatening to sue me will be met with feces. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Again, you know, I, I mean, you're driving me back to, an, to, to a dark place, but I'm just like, out of all the people you send a cease and desist letter to, I mean, how many actual lawsuits have we been in? And, and yeah. see, I mean, cease and desist letters have we gotten. It's just like, do you think Freddie plays a role in all this? Freddie Brick? Yeah. Yeah. I, I call do. him Sinestro. I, I, I do. Uh, so what role does Freddie play? <laughs> well, I'm oh. saying if you're the if you're the puppet master, he might be like the, king the enforcer. No, no, he's the guy behind. He's <laughs> no, the kingmaker. He, Although <laughs> he is the little puppet on your knee. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh. uh, he really is. He really and you, and you put your hand up the back of his hair, which oh, is just oh my god, magnificent. Shut up. You and use you use want, Freddie's little man bun or boy bun to control him. I want to be clear that's that's a line that Dan has crossed. I oh my god, <laughs> man. <laughs> Any, oh. Anyway, Muddy Waters Capital's got to have like a symposium of some sort, man. Got to got to oh, get you to should the be bottom there for the Human Resource Day. Here, that is. <laughs> The Human Resource Day at Muddy Waters Capital yeah, is like the a longest, very brief day. The longest five minutes of your life. Yeah, last three minutes. <laughs> it really is. What is this bouncy dildo? <laughs> yeah, right. That's for the fiducies, apparently. If the bouncy one is a problem, we have one that's totally oh, firm. God, you guys suck. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey, listen. If uh, if you sent me a letter and uh, I offended you, uh, for my part, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. <laughs> If you don't like it, too bad. Thanks for joining us. Uh, see you guys next time uh, on uh, on the Whoop Den. That uh, maybe this shit will blow up and we can, you know, rediscuss it and just have that kind of like mid '80s WWF Royal Rumble. Wouldn't that be fun? All I think right. I'm going to be blocking some people on Twitter pretty soon. Nah. <laughs> I'll see you guys. Good fun. Bye. And to our listeners, thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, leave us a comment. Give us a retweet. Follow us on Twitter. Thanks for joining us. 